Hi everybody, it's me, Daniel. I could really go for some Krispy Kreme. Ah, jeez. <laughs> and yes, this is Andrew, watching Krispy Kreme. So I guess you know that we're going to be reviewing Power Rangers. Krispy Kreme presents Power Rangers. <laughs> Krispy Kreme Rangers. Yo. Well, let's talk about why we're looking forward to this particular film. So, for those of you who don't know, I was actually, my first movie ever being viewed was the Power Rangers movie, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, back in 1995. That was your opening to cinematic excellence. Yes, that was my opening to cinematic excellence. Uh, the jokes were there. You ooze, you lose. Ah, 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 thank ah, you ah. so much, God, thank you. <laughs> Hold on. Plot is really simple and easy to follow, just like the original show Power Rangers that this movie is based off of. Five teenagers with attitude find these mystical power coins from an alien race, are given extreme weird, uh, weird crazy superpowers, they find a giant floating head in an alien spaceship named Zordon who tells them that they have to become the Power Rangers to defeat the evil Rita who's going to resurrect a giant gold monster named Goldar to rip a crystal out of the earth and destroy the planet. Master! Simple. <laughs> First of all, I want, I'm going to say that I was actually really, really looking forward to this Power Rangers movie. Weirdly enough, I think I was one of the only people that was actually really looking forward to this. I am a diehard fan of the original Power Rangers series, and I just, like, a lot of people was like, huh, big budget live action Power Rangers movie, I remember the last time they did that. Oh yeah, that was the one that you saw that not, not many of other people actually saw either. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to find people who have actually seen the movie, they look at me and they're just like, mm -hmm. what, what, Power Rangers was an original film. So I looked at this film and then Mom. saw all these crazy changes that they did from the show, and I was also one of people was like, "Oh, thank God, good actually," because I love, like, I love the cheesiness of the show, but it doesn't really work in a movie. Plus, they don't get hit with sparks. They have the power of spark fly. Uh. Uh. So going into this movie, I wasn't exactly of the highest expectations for its quality, but I did actually come out kind of pleased. I didn't like. I I honestly think it was about as good as a Power Rangers movie could be. Oh, absolutely. Uh, just think about Is that your catchphrase? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. That's, mm. that's it. T-shirts. Hashtag, oh, absolutely. Check. Oh, yeah. Well, let's <laughs> take a look at the characters they pick for this movie. All of these are a bunch of, like, from what I know, no-name actors that have been put in this project. And they're all sort of, they fit with what they were supposed to do in this film. Right. You got the really nerdy guy. You've got, uh, you got the, like, the cheerleader Kind of, uh, kind of girl, like you've got the crazy adrenaline junkie kind of guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so they're all, it really was very breakfast clubby. Very like everyone clubby. said, you can't actually see these five teenagers, which they meet all in detention of all places. Yeah, but you can't watch this without thinking of like the breakfast club kind of type characters because they all fit this kind of particular archetype. But just like breakfast club, they're all actually really fleshed out as characters, about as really fleshed out as characters that you can possibly do in a Power Rangers movie, but even beyond that. Without taking away from the story either. They, yeah. they, they put enough of their story in there to understand them as people, but not enough that it takes away the entirety that you're just watching a bunch of teenagers be broody and sad. Yeah, because that's the thing about, like, about um, the original show that they didn't really do so much. Like, the characters are supposed to be like these five teenagers with attitude they got picked, which they don't really have much of any attitude at all. They're all just like beloved by their entire community and everyone just fucking loves the living hell out of them. But they don't actually have a whole lot of character. Like, you know their names, but there's not really a whole lot that actually sets them apart from each other or gives them anything more than like a one-dimensional depth, as much nostalgia as I have for the show. In this, because so much of this movie is them training to become the Power Rangers and not actually being the Power Rangers, the majority of it is focused on their interactions between each other and seeing them grow together as a team and get to like each other when they all come from these really hard, troubled backgrounds. Oh yeah, definitely. And it really touches them on a lot of like modern day adult issues. That a lot of social commentary. A lot of social commentary. Really love that. There was an autistic guy who was the Blue Ranger. He's there was right, there was a gay, um, a lesbian character, which is the Yellow Ranger. Um, and they, you know, they switched up the races for the characters to seem a lot less racist because, you know, in the show, the black guy was the black well, ranger, obviously. the Asian chick was the yellow ranger, and they weren't really going to do that in this one. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, let's talk about the pacing of this movie. Let's just let the pace. So, like I said, the majority of this movie is them training to become rangers, so they kind of have to, like, pace it out as this whole them growing together and growing to be friends 
and slowly starting to become a little bit more powerful to try to fight this really big ultimate evil that's going to be coming down is already immediately way more powerful than they are. Oh, yeah. Trying to figure out how to become the Power Rangers so they can activate their armor and so they can morph and become all badass like you see in like every fucking trailer. Mastodon. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so they all have these like things and they have these stories that all weave together and them trying to trying to learn amongst each other to be all right, so to have a full arc, which is a thing that everyone in this whole movie had a full character arc that was paced out well throughout the course Absolutely. of the movie. And there was these really great scenes, like these character scenes in this movie that, like I think um, what a lot of people agree, and what I would say is probably my favorite scene, is the campfire scene. Oh yeah. Yeah, where they all sit between each other and they say like, the secrets about their lives. It was fucking sad. And that's the thing, like the interactions between these guys as characters of course the movie made for some pretty damn good humor. Oh, absolutely. They were funny as hell. You're fucking cat ranger. Thank you. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Now I'm saying it without you thinking about it. Um, I, yeah, so they were funny as hell a lot of times. Like the humor tended to get really cheesy and sometimes a little too adultish for this movie. Fair enough. But they interacted so well between each other that you actually really bought their comedy between each other, and that's kind of what made the humor even better. And see, it was also kind of the action sequences that added to the humor itself, the physical humor, right, of this movie. The idea that like you kind of get hit with shock value a lot because you're like. Oh yeah, they're gonna totally be like super cool with their jobs, like uh, as a power engine already because they've got the powers, right? Ha! <laughs> nope. Nope. A lot of failing. A lot a of lot failing of at fail. the Rangers. A lot like this training montage sequence that they had that was filmed really, really well. And I'm not really a big fan of montage. I think it's like the laziest way to do stuff. They had a lot of humor and a lot of growing between each other. You got to watch over the course of that training montage. It was funny as shit. Absolutely. Learned how Absolutely. to do a suplex. There was a really, there was a lot of time devoted to teaching these kids how to do a suplex. Suplex. Which eventually became a very major plot point, by the way. Two things are huge plot points. Suplexes and Krispy Kreme. Yes. Biggest <laughs> plot points of Power Rangers. Not the Power Rangers themselves. Suplexes, Suplexes Krispy, Krispy Kreme. Kreme. There was one more thing that I gotta say that I really enjoyed, and that is, um, a lot of things in that show don't actually make a whole lot of sense in terms of... Why were these teenagers chosen to be Power Rangers? Because they went they... to the same community center and do stuff. <laughs> but no, like in this, they actually find the Power Coins and they merge with them, which gives us the reason why, at, uh, as to why they become the Power Rangers. They have to be the Power Rangers. And not just sick the whole Yeah, ones. Rita actually having, uh, she actually had a more personal connection to the, rain, uh, to the Rangers and to Zordon that she used to be the Green Ranger. That was... Like, um, that actually added a lot more depth to it. And then Zordon even, um, f right, there's a spoiler I'm not going to go into, but there's a reason why, uh, Zordon actually is trying to get these guys to be trained as the Rangers, and it's not really because he believes in them. And it, it actually kind of hurts your feelings a little bit when you see it. So there's a lot of changes from the show that made a lot more sense in this movie, but then there was some other things that did make a lot of sense, and that's just, I guess that's where we're going to go into the negatives here. Negatives. The, ne the title of this film is called Power Rangers. It's about the origins of the Power Rangers. Why were there 15 minutes of Power Rangers? So you go into this Power Rangers movie and it's that you want to see some Power Rangers action, some cool Power Rangers action, but you don't. Not until like the very end of the movie during the final climax scene. It's, I mean, it's rewarding, but yet at the same time you're like, Jesus Christ, could you have not gotten to this earlier? Is your budget that low? Fair enough. Yeah, so. Uh, you don't get very much Power Rangers, and even when you do, the action scenes with the Power Rangers are kind of, they're okay. Like, they're they are pre they're pretty good. They're pretty good in terms of them in the suits, but you don't really see a whole lot of them in the suits. Right. And then when you get to the Zords, it's like, a lot of that stuff, it's like, ow. There's a really, really large, oh, it's like, big, broad scope of cool CGI action that has happened over these years, especially with this movie having a $100 million budget. And it's like, uh, I've seen giant robots fight, and I know that you can do this a lot better. That is, yeah, kind of worse. Yeah. Like, I think, like, what, what made you actually more invested in the fight was not actually the fighting itself, but it was the fact that you actually had grown with these characters so much over the course of the movie. Mm -hmm. So, all right, and you'd actually gotten to like them a lot. So their struggle in this fight to protect the Krispy Kreme... The Krispy Kreme. ...was the only thing they got to invest in. And that's another big major thing in this movie that I'll go into. I came out of this movie really, really desiring to go blow up the nearest Krispy Kreme that I could possibly find, because Krispy Kreme is not only a major plot point in this movie, it is the end-all, be-all major plot point of this movie. The most egregious, like, heavy-handed marketing of anything I've ever seen in my life. It was like the Thunderdome of yeah. Power Rangers. Yeah, it's like, they couldn't go out of their way to, like, make up some random donut shop with a fake-ass name they could have thrown in this, like, no. They were like, 
fucking, there was a moment where Rita goes into a Krispy Kreme that she's about to destroy with her giant monster, just grabs a donut, eats it, and just... Mm -hmm. The very sensual Elizabeth Banks just macking on donuts. You just really, ex you just really expect, just like, her turn there, like... America runs on Krispy Kreme. <laughs> right? yeah. Rita Repulsa runs on Like, Krispy I seriously Kreme. think they said the word Krispy Kreme more than the word Power Rangers in this movie. <laughs> yeah, I think they said Power Rangers, like, all of four times. Oh, and then it was God. just in trying to, like, shove and the plot point. Up. Rita, that's another thing that I've got, I've got issues with. Because, man, there was a good change with her I saw in the beginning of this movie. They made her a creature of ever-loving horror. Because if you remember Rita from the show, she was a very Power Rangers. Ah, look at my cool hair. Ah. That. Yeah, that. She has a very that. Campy is not even remotely good enough to describe Rita. Kurt, she has more camp than Kurt Russell. Oh, shit. Ouch. Man, um, but in the in beginning of this movie, though, when they show her, they show her as, like, used to be the uh, used to be the Green Ranger, had this personal connection with, uh, with them, and explains why she has so much crazy, awesome magic power and shit. Um... However, whenever they, uh, re when she gets resurrected, she is like this really creepy, disgusting, grudge chick. She's like the Enchantress in the beginning of Suicide Squad. And they had the exact same problem they did with Enchantress, which is that she went from like this really creepy, evil, terrifying, uh, villain, and then turns into like this big, over-the-top goddess woman that, like, yeah, belly dance was like evil. Now, um... But, uh, yeah, and they turn her into that, and it's like, wow, you went, like, full fucking camp with that. And you went from, like, this really, really interesting, uh, version of this character to, like, this really crazy, over-the-top campy version of this character. Which sticks out like a sore thumb when you're the only one that's playing your character as campy as fucking possible. Oh, yeah. I really think the biggest problem of this movie is it's very bipolar. It does not know exactly how, like, what kind of movie it wants to be. Does it want to be a more serious take on the Power Rangers, or does it want to be the cheese of the show? And I think that that stems from uh, Saban, the original creator of the Power Rangers, his influence in this movie, because he was like really hard for wanting to have a good creative influence in this movie, because he loved these characters so much. I get that. But then you see all these elements of this movie that actually play really well and are really and are actually really interesting in, in the sense of these characters having these really serious backstories and having these really serious interactions with each other. To the point that the Power Rangers stuff, the actual Power Rangers stuff, was so cheesy that it didn't fit with the rest of the, of the more serious stuff. I was actually more invested in the seriousness of the movie than I was in the Power Rangers aspect of the movie. Final thoughts. Um... I went this movie with a lot of expectations. A lot of them were met. There were some that were kind of fell short. My final thoughts, um, I went this movie with very few expectations, honestly, because I love Power Rangers, but it is a goofy, campy mess of a show that just holds a lot of nostalgic feelings for me. Power Rangers is not a good show. It's a fun no, show, it's, it's, but it's, it's not a good it's show. It's like watching Beetleborgs. Yeah, it was like, it was, it's like old Ninja Turtles. Like, it's, it's goofy, it's campy, it's stupid, but it was fun. This actually was of more, it was of more good quality, it was better quality, and it was better than I actually expected it to be, and honestly kind of better than it even needed to be. And I actually want to see where they go for it. So, honestly, better than I thought it was going to be. Kind of really want to see where they go later with it. All in all, it was good. It yes, was pleasing. It was, a, it was a good, pleasing film for both new fans and old fans. So, I give it six power coins out of ten. 6.5 out of ten. Wow, so much air. <laughs> that point five really makes that difference. Huh? <laughs> Made the dust up between Krispy Kreme and Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> oh! oh All right, everybody. It's been really good to talk to you about with Power Rangers. I'm Daniel. I'm Andrew. And this is Filmcraft. Bye. Bye.